Hey everyone, my name is Lisa. Welcome to Crepe Myrtle Row. Um, today I'm going to show you my vintage inspired guest bedroom. My daughter recently got married and moved away, so I've taken what was her room and turned it into my vintage guest room. I've used a lot of furniture pieces that were my grandparents. Um, I have a lot of memories in this room from things that I've inherited from from my grandparents and stuff and then I have thrifted a lot of items and so I want to flip the camera around and show you what this room looks like now. I'm actually going to start here at the end of my hallway going into her room. That's my bedroom. Y'all will probably never see it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not much to show. I have a big bed in there, the sleep number beds, the king size, which takes up most of my room, and there is just no good way of fixing it up with that big bed in there. But, you know, at my age, comfort is more important to me than what it looks like because no one's in there but my husband and I, so that probably will never be shown. <laughs> but anyhow, here is um, the vintage suitcases, some of them that I collect, and the pieces on it. And there I am in the little parts up here. What I keep in these used to keep my out of season clothing because my closets are very small here. And so, you know, summertime clothes would go in here during the wintertime and then vice versa. But now, you know, she's moved out. So I, my daughter's moved out. So I have her closet and I have extra storage with the um, furniture in the guest room so I've been able to move my stuff into there and not have to put it in here but now I keep my decor pieces like this bottom one all my chicken decor like I use on my hutch in the dining room that's in there there's like blue and white dishes in one there's greenery stuff in one stuff I use on my um, tiered trays in one and I've actually got to make me some labels I wrote down what was in each one before I put it up and I've got to make me some more labels and put them on to the to the side over here somewhere that I'm the only one that's going to really notice them just so it makes it easier when I need to get some pieces out. But what I will show you is some of my um, vintage little doilies that I have collected and just different little pieces here. I love the little porcelain birds and stuff in the pink colors and so when I find those out or anything with the little, like Napco, Insco, where, you know, all that kind of stuff, Lefton, I, I love to collect those. And then I found these little prints of these, to me, kind of little, little French girls um, at a Goodwill, I believe it was. I think I paid 99 cents for those, which all of this came from Goodwill. The suitcases... Um, a couple of those I my son gave me when he bought his house. They were in the barn, and most of them I've thrifted. So here is the room as you walk in. This iron bed was my my grandfather, who would, if he were still alive, would be a hundred next year, was born on this bed. You know, of course not the mattress and stuff, but this bed was his my great great grandparents and he was born on this bed so and then also it was mine when I was a little girl growing up we had it in my home and that was my bed so my parents recently gave it to me to, to put in this room now this bedspread and it is so pretty I love this Chanel peacock this was an antique store find for like thirty dollars I believe but it also made me think of one my grandmother had on her bed when I was growing up. But it had a white background where this one has the purple. So there is that. And then here is my state plates. If you've watched me for a while, you may have seen um, my tea party garden out back. Where I was going to start collecting the state plates and surrounding the the tree with those and I'm still going to do that with certain ones but the ones that look more like this style where they, the state things like right in the middle I think I want to save those because they are 
definitely <laughs> the older ones to put in here and see I, I love the colors on these plates um, and I still have a lot more I just ran out of hangers and that's why you see kind of a random pattern here in places is I left space to add more as I get them now um, this being a vintage bedspread of course it's not long enough to go up and cover pillows and or to the floor so I had to get a little eyelet skirt there I need to steam it <laughs> I was hoping letting it hang would get the wrinkles out, but it, it doesn't seem to be working. So I found these pillow shams and the eyelet skirt at Walmart, and it just goes with the green in there. And I found these curtains at Walmart, which kind of make me think of a little bit of a chenille look to them, the way they're made. So I just put those there. And these lamps here were my husband's grandmother's. And his uncle gave them to us, and I just love this piece. Now, he had to rewire these because, I mean, these things look like they were 100 years old. I don't know. His his uncle wasn't sure how old they were, but the cords on them were like the very, very old ones. And there was no way I was plugging these things up using those old cords. <laughs> so, my husband, I bought the kits and everything, and we totally rewired them. Or, he did. This is my grandmother's sewing machine, which I learned how to sew by watching her on this machine um, growing up. And she sewed for like everyone everywhere all around the town. A lot of the local schools used her to make their um, cheerleading outfits. A lot of the young girls locally had her make their prom dresses, just everything. That's, uh, I, that's my biggest memory, you know, of being around my grandmother was her sitting at this sewing machine and of course down there is some of the vintage one of her sewing boxes and then this was just a vintage train case that I found that I keep my current sewing stuff in and then here is the dresser that was um, my, my granny and papa's growing up and it's the only one I ever remember and on the back of it it says American Walnut um, 1966 so I guess they bought it sometime around that and these are just thrifted items that I have found to put on here I just got this one yesterday it's actually a bouquet that someone has took and put all of these little pins or brooches on which I love the brooches so and then you can see it's a milk glass hand holding that and then I recently thrifted a whole box of these vintage gloves. And this was one of my grandmother's brooches. It was in her sewing box. I found all kind of neat little things inside her sewing box. I spent hours just going through that those boxes and the notions and stuff that she has in there. This was another pen that was in there. Um, and I, I can't remember if I've showed all that in a thrift store haul but it's just someone took the teacup and made a little fairy garden these were a recent thrift store haul that are the sunbonnet sue quilt pieces and of course that pocketbook the beaded purse and that one is part of my thrifted ones that I collect and then up here is a lot of the sewing things my grandmother had them in tin boxes little cardboard boxes anything she could put them in she kept them in so here you can see a lot of the buttons she still had on the cards here's some of the buttons I mean there was lots and lots of buttons some of the little threads and these tins were full of like zippers and other things for sewing this is something that was thrifted and then my little scarf was thrifted here, but all of these little pieces are things that she kept inside those sewing boxes. I don't know why they were in there, not in her jewelry box, but um, this was actually a clip-on earring. But I just decided to get them out and put them there. And then here, like I said, she had lots of buttons. These are huge, as you can see. This is my hand up against these large mason jars. And then 
there was some of the threads. Now that's not all she had, but that's all I could fit in that jar. And this piece, I love the looks of this. And some of you may remember this needles came in. And there's still a lot of needles in this one. But I just loved that little book. And then this was a little New Testament Bible that was inside one of the boxes of her stuff. Now this is just a giant spool of nylon thread that I thrifted. And I just loved it because it's a giant spool. <laughs> it looks like a spool of thread. So I can use it a lot in my crafting, but I wanted to get it. And then here I just have some different books stacked up. I recently um, thrifted this tin. And then this is a Singer sewing attachment kit. And I loved that little box. And it still has the attachment in it. A couple of vintage sewing books. And then these two were some of her sewing boxes. And they're slam full. And I've actually already got some use out of these. Because she had some little pins they're they're like little corkscrew looking pins they had little crystal heads on them and they're made to hold on bed skirts and stuff so this bed skirt i have on this bed is actually just one that runs around the edge and it was sagging down so i got those pins out and pinned it up so it all stayed nice and even and i was like thank you granny <laughs> i actually got to use something out of there and here's another pair of the little gloves that I found and I have shown a video of my vintage purse collection I just recently got this black patent leather one and found that little scarf I tied on it and I will try to put an odd card up here for that video if you haven't seen it um, that shows all of those because this is not all of them but it's all I wanted to put up here and the top row is just some random things I had around that I wanted to add in here um, that was my daughter when she was I'm thinking like three years old <laughs> so and these shelves <laughs> these were in her room and they were covered in high heels every space was stacked with high heels um, she loved the big stilettos the platforms everything she and she's, you know, big as a minute, so she can wear those heels and look really good in them. So I, I just didn't take the shelves down. And I thought later on I might take them down and repaint the room. But I think I actually like having the space there to collect, put my collections on. So they're probably not going to go anywhere now. And if I can find a picture of her, how many shoes she had, I'll, I'll insert that here too. <laughs> and here is... This box is another one of those vintage train cases that I've thrifted. And I keep um, a lot of my fingernail polish remover and stuff like that in there. So we'll pan back around here. Um, let me go ahead and show you on this. That was just an old table that I used to have beside my chair in the living room. And of course you can put books right there and just some thrifted items that I had gotten but I'll show you a few more of those plates I love those with the gold and this is probably one of my favorites too I would love to find one of South Carolina I'm in South Carolina and don't have one of my own state but there's that bed I spin around here and now here is um, some more of the suitcases. Those don't have anything in them yet, but um, trust me, they will be filled up soon. And my daughter never liked having the, there was sliding glass doors when she was little, and she didn't really like it. She wanted easy access to her closet, so we put a um, shower curtain up. So when I took it down, because she had black in here, black shears, all this kind of stuff, didn't want that in here. So when I took it down, I was trying to find what to put up here. Well, I also like to find these vintage crocheted blankets. I just love these things. And the time it took someone to do it. And they already had the little scalloped edge. So I just put it on the rings and hung it up there. And first I thought I've lost my mind, but 
I've had several people comment on it that I've shown and they love it so I guess it wasn't such a crazy idea <laughs> and here like I said with the suitcases some more of my little vintage doilies and cameras that was my camera when I was a little girl and then this one was my mother-in-law's when she was a little girl and this was one I also had when I was younger and these were some thrift store cross stitch finds that I found I'm not sure about the frames if I'm wanting to keep that frame or find something different but now I move around here to this dresser and back up and show you the mirror actually goes or this is a chest of drawers the mirror goes to the dresser over here but of course because it's under the um, shelves you I, we couldn't put it there and my husband he come up with the idea he said well it looks like it actually is made more for this chest of drawers with the size so I was like that's a brilliant idea it's, it's tall I love it so we put it there and I have to tell you the story behind this <laughs> Is growing up my grandfather kept his socks in this top drawer and he had this little candy it was called maple nut nugget look I don't you can still buy them um, and they're just like a little nut covered in this maple kind of hard candy like stuff or um, chewy like candy <laughs> like, I, it's hard to explain <laughs> but he kept those in there and if we were really good <laughs> he would let us have a piece of candy out of that drawer and so I remember of course you know I'm shorter so this to me was like this big giant dresser that I could barely reach in the top drawer to get it out of but I remember getting to go get that treat when I was a kid and and loved that and actually in the bottom of that drawer apparently at some point I was a little rebellious and took a pencil and wrote my name and I looked like I might have been about five or six years old just learning to write my name <laughs> So I had wrote out Lisa and then I have a cousin Tammy who apparently tried to write hers out But she's a couple of years younger than me So she just knew how to make a T an A and an M and then she must have stopped there <laughs> But I just I thought that was so funny when I don't remember doing that But I, when I um, recently received this I got it out and I was cleaning up everything and I found that in it and I thought that was so funny and then here is some of my thrifted um, pieces that I recently got the lady head vases um, if you follow me on Inst Instagram I have put a post of this up where I found the hand here that face this hand that vase the one back there and that and two of the milk glass pieces over on that dresser for $25 when I was um, visiting my daughter in Kansas we went to a very junky dirty thrift store and found those and so don't pass those <laughs> stores up you never know just one of these is worth the $25 but uh, actually more there's um, I think this one it was listed one of these two one was on eBay for like 160 and one was on eBay for like 140 but now they were in perfect condition and these are not um, but I just I loved them and then this one is one that my mother-in-law had and this one here these is what started my love of these things she got those when my husband one when my husband was born one when his sister was born and um, I mean they're in their early 50s already so so that is how long she's had those and then this here this one was missing it was shown to have for a, a rhinestone or something was on there and it was missing so I found this little stone it was actually a little pendant in my grandmother's stash and um it's not real it's just costume jewelry so I cut the little ring off and glued it onto that so now she has a rock <laughs> and I don't know if y'all have ever seen these these are air plants these are the coolest things they just grow in the air and I think it's gets bigger and bigger and then up here is my favorite of the gloves it is the opera length with the pearl buttons um, they come up like 
almost to the shoulders. Makes me think of um, Catherine Hepburn and Breakfast at Tiffany's, I believe it was. Has the long gloves and stuff. But there is the room and all my many memories when I come in here and I look at things and I see everything and it just, it amazes me the stuff that you know you can remember just looking at little pieces and, and it brings back the the fondest memories that you have of someone and I'm turning out to love this room I believe over every room in my house I come in here every day and I sit and just look around and hopefully when my daughter and son-in-law come home um, for the holidays that they will feel comfortable in here and enjoy it and not feel like they're in some old grand grandma's room. <laughs> you know, some people get that and they're like, oh, I don't like that. But hopefully they will enjoy it. And um, especially with some of the history behind the pieces that are in here. But I hope y'all have enjoyed this. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, go over there. I'm Crate Myrtle Road there also. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love you to be a part of my YouTube family. So click that um, notification bell and subscribe down below. The notification bell will let you know each time I upload. And hopefully I will be getting my Christmas decor out real soon. I know here it is. I mean, this is actually the week before Thanksgiving and I haven't started it. I normally would already have it up, but I have had a little bit of a shoulder injury, just overexerted it and had some pain with doing heavy lifting. So, you know, any of the heavy lifting in this room, my husband and son have done and everything else I can do one handed. But the Christmas decor, that, that's a little bit more to that. So hopefully next week I can get that out. My, my son told me he would get it out for me and then I will start working on that. Actually going to put a, a tree up in this room also. But I hope y'all have a very blessed day, and I will see you next time. Bye.